to say hello once again because I don't know if I did that as I rushed in the door this morning. Um, it's been a busy day, but it's never too busy to worship God. And I thank God for giving me the ability to wake up this morning and start me on my way. And I hope that you all feel the same, that you've come into the house of the Lord and that you will be refreshed. I want to um, thank God for being with me and continuing me on my journey because my journey has been rough, has been um, some up, up and down, you know, I've had hills and valleys, but it's all been good because everything that he puts you through and that you go through in this world is to bring you to center your life on him. And that is the most important thing we learn of our journey is we keep focus on him he will show us how to get through all that we have to deal with. And so now as we come before you today, I want to kind of um, talk a little bit off the cuff about a, a, a few things. Um, you are blessed. Amen. And we're all blessed. And we got to think about our blessings every day because we live in the United States of America. No matter how evil our government is, no matter how um, people might treat us in this land, we are still blessed. We have food on our table. We can go to a grocery store. We can walk around the corner and get what we need if we just want a snack. We are really blessed. And we need to think, count about all our blessings each and every day. When we wake up in the morning, we are still breathing. We are blessed. There are people who don't have fresh air to breathe. We are blessed we can get into a car. I don't care how raggedy it is. We can move and get to where we need to go. And so we are blessed. And I want you all to think about counting your blessings today. And I, I, I was looking last night, early this morning, about what I wanted to talk about. And I really couldn't decide because there's so many things I wanted to say. But... I was stuck on um, Matthew 5 because it is um, something that I grew up with when I was younger. And if you remember, it was called the Beatitudes. And God talked about how we are blessed. And so I kind of wanted to talk about that today, but I just wanted to stick with the word on that. I'm just going to go through that with you so you remember that. Because we're forgetting a lot of things in our society. We have forgotten the Ten Commandments. We've forgotten the Lord's Prayer. We've forgotten all the things that we've been taught. So I want to bring this to your remembrance this morning. So please listen up as I read the scripture. But I'm going to read it from um, Eugene Peterson's version. And we call that the, um, the message translation. And so it says, starting with the title, You Are Blessed. When Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed a hillside. Those who were apprentices to him, and we considered that those his disciples, the committed, climbed with him. And arriving at a quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. This is what he said. You are blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and his rule. You are blessed when you feel you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. You are blessed when you're content with just who you are, no more and no less. That's the moment you find yourselves proud owners of everything that can't be brought. You are blessed 
when you've worked up a good appetite for God, yeah. he's food yeah. and he's drink in the best meal you'll ever have. Amen. You are blessed Thank when you care at the moment of being careful. You find yourselves cared for. You are blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and your heart put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. You are blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. You're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. The persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. Not only that, count yourselves blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you to discredit me. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and they are uncomfortable. You can be glad when that happens. Give a cheer. But though they don't like it, I do. And all heaven applauds and know that you are in good company. My prophets and witnesses have always gotten into this kind of trouble. Have you gotten into trouble? Are you true witnesses? This is what I really want to talk about today because my heart has been shaken up so much this last few months that all I can think about is getting closer to God. Yeah. All I can think about is nothing is important but that relationship you have with God. So I'm rededicating my life to him. Amen. I am fully embracing him. I am getting closer and closer to spending more time with him because nothing else matters. At this time, I want to talk about the earth of the earth and the world that comes from Matthew 5, 13 to 16. Because in it, it talks about that we are the salt and we are the light. And today I want you to think about, are you really being salt and light? But we need to talk about what that really means. And again, the message transmission uh, message transmission is this translation is this thank you let me tell you why you're here you're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of the earth if you lose your saltiness how will people taste godliness you've lost your usefulness and you will end up in the garbage. Have you lost your usefulness? Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors of the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We are going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make, make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you on a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, you got to shine. You got to keep open house. You got to be generous with your lives by opening up to others. You will prompt people to open up with God because God is this generous father in heaven. We are supposed to be salt of the earth, and we're supposed to be light of the world. 
And so those texts that I just read to you, they are well known, but they're also very misunderstood. Christians will say when they're using these texts that we are the salt and we are the light. You want to automatically give yourself that accolade. You want to say, because I'm a Christian, we are the salt and we are the light. But they don't seem to realize that being salt is a pretty hopeless affair. There was only one person in the Bible, a woman who could really say she was salt. I am salt. That woman was the wife of Lot. She was turned into a pillar of salt when she looked back. She looked back on her past in Sodom and Gomorrah. She became salt. She became 100% salt. And nobody around her seemed to have been very happy about it. Because being salt is hopeless. There's nothing so useless. There's nothing so unmanageable and so inedible as salt by itself. You can't do anything with just salt, with salt by itself. In a time of hunger and famine, you cannot eat it. In time of drought, you cannot drink it. That would only make things worse. So what I'm trying to get you to see is salt by itself is no good. It's useless. It makes fields infertile. It kills life. It also preserves death. It's heavy. It's useless. Salt only becomes useful when it is used. So as Jesus indicates in today's text, mixed up with other things, it's important. It becomes useful. We are not salt. We are the salt of the earth. We should be mixed up with the earth. What does that mean? We should be mixed up with the reality around us. We are useless alone doing nothing. If Christians say or think, I am the salt of the earth, they should understand that as a consequence. They should be prepared to be thrown into the cooking pot of human affairs. They cannot just stand in front of the pot. They have to put in that pot. They have to be put in that pot. They have to be mixed with the contents in that pot. They have to be boiled and smothered with it particularly disappearing in the process, but nevertheless making it all tasty and edible. Christians who are the salt of the earth do not need to be immediately do all kinds of special things, though they might sometimes be called to do special things. They do not have to join all kinds of organizations, though they might have to join groups at some time. They do not have to organize all kinds of prayer groups right away, but they should pray. They do not even have to run out and do all kinds of social work, though that is very useful. Christians who are the salt of the earth should first of all be taste givers and taste makers in our human reality. In this world and in this life, in this street and in this town, 
in this city and in this country and in the world, as long as salt is not mixed with something, it is too salty, it is too bitter, yeah. it is too sharp, yeah. it is too biting, yeah. it is too wounding, too hot. If salt is used by itself, y'all, that is what I'm trying to get you to see. If it's used by itself, it is like the salt torturers used when they beat people with a whip through a towel drenched in salt that it is put over their bare buttocks. The salt that is beaten into live flesh, it hurts for days on end. Salt alone is unbearable and harmful. Jesus also speaks about the light we are supposed to be. Again, very many Christians will eagerly call themselves the light. They stand in their own light. They're just like a candle in an empty room on a light stand under an empty bucket which stands in its own light, glorifying its own shine. We see so many people today standing in their own light. We have government and governors and legislatures standing in their own light. They have forgotten who the one true light is, or maybe they never knew. We must pray again for the light to be revealed in our hearts, in our lives, in our witness. We must be light. We must be witnesses. We cannot shine in our own glory and in our own selves. It is time to be the light again in this dark world, in this evil world that we are now living in. You must speak up. You must speak out. Light alone is useless. Light alone is blinding. Light alone does not make you see anything at all. Light alone is the light shown in the eyes of tortured prisoners to make them confess. Light alone hurts. Have you seen the light of the sun lately? How bright it is? It's blinding. You can't look at it directly. You have to be careful not to engage yourself fully into looking in the light. It can make you have light blindness. Life becomes useful when it makes us see things other than itself. The world around us is looking at us. The world around us needs to see the light of Christ flowing through us. We are not anything on our own. Receive the light today as we begin Advent season again, as we seek the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We remember and we wait for our Lord's return. Meanwhile, this is our task and our mission. Every one of us who was baptized received a candle lit from the Easter candle. It says, receive the light of Christ. And in his baptism ceremony, it was for that reason, too, that everyone got a pinch of salt on his lips when we went into the water. When we were baptized, we took on some salt flavor. We receive the light and we receive the salt. We should be the light. If we live and act like Jesus Christ did, then we will be a consolation to others. We will be their salvation and their hope and their comfort. 
It is that salt and that light that you can find. And we can thank heaven and thank God all over this world and all over this country and all over this town. People can hit and be changed by Jesus' spirit that lives in us. In Psalms 112, verses 4 through 6, they are the lights in the darkness for the upright. They are generous and merciful and just. They take pity, they give, and they lend. They conduct their affairs with honor. They will never waver. They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of evil news. With firm hearts, they believe in the Lord. With steadfast hearts, they will not fear. Open-handed, they give to the poor. Their justice will stand forever. Their hearts will be raised in glory. This is what the light looks at, like because we're giving, we're sharing, we're leading, we're helping, we're serving the poor in our land, the poor in heart, those who need God, we give the light of Christ as we do, as we live, as we share God within us. Amen. Let us be the light. Yes. Let us be salt yes. and light yes. as God gives us strength yes. and courage to do his will. Yes. And now as we leave this day, go back and read the words of God as he has given us all that we need to share and to be the light. Amen. And now as we end today, those who have been listening and have been giving an ear to the word of the Lord that I have attempted to speak today, I ask you to go into your heart and look at your life. See where you are at this moment. See if you are being a light to someone that you encounter each and every day. Go and see how you are treating your family, your neighbors, and your loved ones. Are you being the light of Christ? Mm -hmm.